Have you ever played a game of chance? Is your death worth risking for a great reward or just for a thrill? Is there a way to outsmart and outplay the Grim Reaper? Today we test the believability of cursed games. Welcome to Believing the Bazaar, where we dive into the unknown and the unusual and tell you whether or not we find it believable. Man, this is so weird. I'm not sitting next to you, like across from your face. Yeah, Charlie is in quarantine mode. Yeah, yeah, because I am, I am, <laughs> I'm saying JV positive. I am. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I am <laughs> coronavirus positive. Not that there's anything wrong with it, you know, it just, it is, um, you, you've been replaced with my cat, Gus. You might hear him oh. s- scratch the carpet, meow, scratch the back of my chair, scratch the door, jump on the table. All of these things are possible throughout this episode. Yeah, anything's possible. He might get a um, rating at the end of the episode, we'll see. That's okay, we just got a wonderful review. Yes, the mermaid review, which is awesome. I always love to see what episodes people are first introduced to me too i think that if, was i was like well, that's weird i think okay. if, i think if you just find out about the podcast i think a lot of people probably started one but I, there's always like a certain topic that you're searching for and if you find us that way then that would be the one you know that you my goal is to for us to be available for every topic that we cover but that's not always the case yeah right i'm just i just want to say i'm really comfortable in here like I know I should start the show right now, but like I'm really comfortable in like this like little little like blank cocoon I've made myself. I have no idea yeah. what it looks like. We're doing completely video free. It's like <laughs> it's like you're a radio caller in like hey X Y K Z bizarre with Charlie. Like why don't they just use their uh, their video cameras? Well, I don't have one because of the computer I have. I literally have three screens in front of me, and not single one of them are playing video. So. Before we start, I do want to say there's a special thanks to Y J Bomb on TikTok. Um, his videos about this, like, topic inspired me to do this episode. Like, he did this, like, whole, like, list of, like, these games you shouldn't play. I was like, that's a really cool idea for an episode. So, I wanted to make sure he gets some credit. And then another shout-out to Ghost in the Machine blog, who had the details about most of these games. It was really cool. I was like, wow, this is just all in one place, huh? That's convenient. Yeah, because I kept Googling. I was like, Ghost in the Machine again. That's crazy. Awesome. But from there, let's uh let's get started. What is a cursed game? A game that is has bad juju attached to it and you can have worse outcomes than just losing a family game of whatever you're playing. Yeah, it's more than just risk. Well, I guess it is risk, but like well, the board game risk. I love risk. Have you ever played risk? No. That's one of my favorites, man. Nah, it it looks time consuming. It is. It is. I mean, it is. But I like it a lot. I also it, do, know, can I can I just say something really quick? Because I realize we're terrible at this. Because we it's we don't record far in advance, but just enough. I hope everybody had a happy holiday. I hope everybody had a merry Christmas. If you celebrate, oh, absolutely, that. yeah. And I hope you enjoyed our bonus Patreon sampling. Yes, me too. It's not. It's not. It's not going <laughs> to happen often. Because we're not trying to rob the value from our patrons. But every now and then, I think it's fun to just kind of show what's happening over there. Right, yeah, to ex- like, to talk about those things that we have that are extra. And to show more of just a, just a, this is content forward, Charlie and Tyler. Yeah, and you get to meet producer Ben. But anyway, yeah. anyway, enough about him. Uh, <laughs> you were talking about uh, Risk and other trash games. Yeah, no, okay. All right, so... A cursed game is, it's a game that you quote unquote play that involves entities, like spiritual entities. And it's either like, that play, be, it's like you think it's a two player game, and then all of a sudden it's like player three has entered, and you're like, whoa, yeah, whoa, yeah. wait a minute. You're like, oh no, I don't have another controller. And that, that entity could be like a death or a ghost or a certain kind of spirit. And this game has potential to be beneficial to the player. 
But if the player loses, the consequences can be dire. Oh, I don't have the luck for that type of a thing. I know. I, like, I'm going to ask you if you'd play these games at the end. You got to listen to them. Yeah, I'll have to know about the reward. Do you remember the first time, and maybe it wasn't special to you, but the first time you were able to play with two two scenarios. One, were you able to play with more than two people at one time? And two, the first time you played online with people you didn't know. Do those stand out to you? I don't remember the first time I was play, able to play like multiplayer games. But I had a lot of fun, like sleepovers playing, like yeah, yeah, yeah. N sixty four. See, I was yeah. that wasn't my generation. I was a PlayStation kid, and for like my birthday, I got one of those things so you could hook up two extra controllers. So I had two friends, three friends over, and none of them cared about WWE. But I had some <laughs> SmackDown game, and I like got all these extra controllers, and we were plugging it in, and it was like, oh, this is so cool. But I remember the first time I played online, it was GTA four. And I was in a car with some guy I didn't know. And I literally, I took a digital camera out and I took a picture of the screen (laughs) of me riding in the stupid van in GTA 4 with some guy I didn't know. And I'm like, this is crazy. That's almost sweet. Almost. I remember playing Halo online all the time. Do you talk about the movie Stay Alive in this, in this episode? No, stay alive. Yeah, so it's it's a movie. It was, has Frankie Muniz in it when he was relevant. I think he has oh. he has trouble remembering things now, and not, that's not even a that's, joke. That's just a fact. That's not true. That's not true. I actually just saw a TikTok about that. It's not true. He does. He's fine. Good. I'm very glad to hear that. <laughs> but he's in it, and I think Sophia Bush from One Tree Hill's in it. But anyway, basically, it's you play this game. It's a virtual game. It's a horror game. And when you die in the video game. Like the next day or shortly after, oh, you die. that's an old movie. Yeah, it's I remember 2005, that. if I remember correctly. But yeah, you you die very similar to how your character dies. I loved it at yes. the time. It it mm. doesn't quite hold up, but it's it's a good it's a good like you're watching with buddies and friends and popcorn. Okay, that's not like the games we're playing here. Okay, in most, if not all of these games, well, actually in most of these games, I say most. It's one one game. <laughs> is only able to benefit you. The other two are more about the challenge. (laughs) And it's something that only the entity can offer you in that one game. So there are a lot of games like this, like a lot of like cursed games that you can get benefits from. They're found on Reddit, mostly. But if you're versed in the occult, they'll help you find answers to what you're looking for. There's also Google. Um, I I might recommend (laughs) I know they got rid of Yahoo Answers, but trust me, someone out there is going through something similar. You don't need to play a cursed game, but I'm not. Tr- they not get, yeah. I'm not trying to shoot it down eight minutes in either. Nine minutes in, so you know. No, I know, but this, like they'll give you like an extra year of life, or like they'll tell you where your where your parents are going to die, or when you're going to die, that kind of stuff. I, but I feel like it's like that. You know, you'll get an extra year of life. But then, you know, right before that year starts, you get hit by a car, and then you're just in, like, a vegetative state for a year. You know what I mean? Oh, like like a, like a, like a genie wish. Yeah. Like, it's like, like, it's going to happen, but you weren't right about it, so. Or the Leprechaun movies Egypt. with Jennifer Aniston. Are you going to be surprised? I haven't seen those. I'm not surprised. And you, <laughs> you don't need to see any of them, to be honest. <laughs> so, I originally had six games and how to play them, but, man, I was going through the rules, and I was like, I'm just going to cut this down to three. Maybe we'll do a part two where you do the other three. That'd be cool. Yeah, there's like there's a lot there's a lot of really cool ones. But these are the three games and how you play them and what happens if you win and what happens if you lose. So the first game is a Japanese game called Dorum Sun or the Bath Game. Hey, do me a favor. Look down at your shirt real quick. Does it scream spooky vibes or paranormal aesthetic? If not, you need to check out Loudmouth Threads. Loudmouth Threads is a small artist-run shop. Artist meaning they actually create awesome designs and high-quality merch. I'm a big fan of their new Cryptid Research Team shirt, which proudly displays many cryptids we've talked about right here on Believing the Bazaar, like Mothman, the Flatwoods Monster, the Fresno Nightcrawler, and the often-forgot-about Dover Demon. If you happen to like horror movies, trust me, you are going to like Loudmouth Threads. We're talking It, The Thing, The Shining, Pet Cemetery, Scream, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, It Follows, Hereditary, and more. 
love all things Stephen King, check out the Losers Club tea. You won't be disappointed. And these are just my favorites. You'll have to check out loudmouthreads.bigcartel.com yourself to see which creepy shirt speaks to you. And for all you bizarros out there, use the promo code BIZARRE at checkout, and you'll get a very lucky 13% off your entire purchase. So head to loudmouthreads.bigcartel.com and use the promo code BIZARRE, and that's with two R's, not two Z's, like I messed up for about four months on social media, and you'll get 13% off. Wear your paranormal clothes the only way you know how, loudly, with loudmouth threads. Dorm sum, or the bath game. And the player starts by entering a full bath. Mm. So if you're a shower person, you gotta figure it out. And you can't do this unless you have a bathtub. So when the player is sitting in the middle of the bathtub, they close their eyes, and they should start to wash their hair. And while doing this, the player repeats, Dormason fell down. And that's a name, the Dormason. And the player doesn't stop until they finish washing their hair. And the whole time, they must keep their eyes shut. When washing your hair, you should be able to picture a woman standing in the tub. Now, as she's standing there, she will fall, and she will hit her head on the faucet, and she will lose an eye. So you're going to be able to envision this in your head while you're sitting there. I'm having a hard time envisioning it right now. <laughs> she hits. No way. She's standing. So you, so where where do you have to be? So you have to be okay. So you're sitting <laughs> with the faucet behind you, and she has to fall over you and hit her head. Otherwise, she's falling backwards, right? How do you? She falls that? face forward into the faucet over you, so, right? Like you're yeah. Okay. You're supposed to be facing the faucet. Wait. So, so she's to your, she's behind you. I assume so. Yeah, she's not as easy as it. You know, I mean, it, <laughs> it takes a while to wash your hair if you do it right anyway, so you have time. All right, but Tyler, so, go downstairs and get your bathtub. You'll figure it out. I, wow, that is downstairs. I'm not ashamed to admit that it's been a while since I've washed my hair. I don't. I'm not one of the people <laughs> that wash my hair every day. I'm trying to have hair when I'm sixty. You feel me? Yeah, I don't do that either. You shouldn't. You're not supposed to. It's a very American thing. So after this Dharmasun falls and hits her head on the faucet, the player will then hear movement behind them. Now, regardless of the tub is in a position where the, the wall could be behind them or whatever, they're still going to hear movement behind them. And the person should not turn around. And when you hear this, this movement behind you, it means you summon the ghost. And the person asks out loud, why did you fall in the bathtub? And after you ask the question, the person is supposed to get out of the tub with their eyes shut, and the person should slowly rise without tripping or falling and keep their eyes shut the whole time and get in bed and go to sleep. The next day, they should drain the tub. Now, this is when the ad game actually starts. So you don't lose if you slip getting out of the tub? I think you, I think you mess up the summoning at that point. Okay. Because you're supposed to not slip. It says specifically not to slip. You gotta have wide receiver feet. I'm telling you, if I try to get out of the tub with my eyes shut, I'm slipping, probably stepping on my cat, sliding, hitting my head, <laughs> hitting my head on the faucet, and probably killing myself. Maybe that's what the game, game over. That's what the ghost wants. You didn't Dormous you didn't even wins. make it through the prologue. We're just teaching you the controls and you died. That's how you know the game yeah. game's not meant for you in that case. It's long, right? That's why I decided I was like, oh, I should cut these. I had the I had the invert controls on. That was the problem. Oh no. No one ever can win that way. I don't I don't know how people could play that way. Man, I really don't. Like crazy, it's hard. Man. Crazy. All right. So the next morning is when this game actually starts. The player, when they get up, they should have a sense of being watched. And they are. And the ghost of the woman that died is following you. And she's going to follow you and get closer and closer to you all day. And if she touches you, you lose. You die. And if the player feels like she's getting too close to them, they turn around and they yell, tomorrow, which means stop. And this is supposed to, like, back her off. And then if you don't end the game before midnight, she will find you in your dreams and she will kill you regardless. So how do you, how do you end the game? To end the game, the player must wait until she's close. And instead of saying T- tomorrow, they must say kita, which means I cut you loose. And they swing their hand in a chop. And that's how you play the game. And that's how you end it, too. Seems a little arbitrary. I feel like you wouldn't know in the moment if you won. I, 
I think you feel like a re- like a release, like she like leaves and you feel it. Hmm. So the the goal is you have to let her get as close as possible without touching you, but close enough that your karate chop motion ends the game. Yeah, pretty much. Before yeah. midnight. Before midnight. Otherwise you're done no matter what. Hmm. What if she just avoids you and you have to find her? Um, she's not going to do that. Okay. She's trying to get close to you just so she can get close enough and whisper in your ear that you forgot to get behind your ears. <laughs> There's still some suds. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, she wants to, she wants to take you for her own, I think. No, I'd be creepy if, like, you never knew how close she was, but you knew it was done. If she got close enough that she could whisper, you lose in your ear. Oh, Just, yeah. like, you lose. Although, if, How do you think it, you die? Uh, it says you die. I don't know what that means. How and you die? I don't know how you die. Listen, this was written by someone, right? I mean, this game exists, so somebody had to think of it. Ending, yeah, endings are hard, man. <laughs> <laughs> if you're writing a movie, the second act is what they call like the desert. It's hard to get through the second act. But when it comes to writing anything, it's hard to do a good ending. So I think just saying you die is like, eh, they get it. You know, no, you die. You die. You know, you blow up. Maybe everybody's um, just won the game, so we don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's like the like ring, and they don't explain it. You just get found with a very terrified expression on your face. Have you seen the ring? Um, the ring. The Samara. No, well. I have not seen the ring. Man, actually, I saw part of it. I was so scared for the ring. Actually, it's it's. Pretty- I didn't want to die. I didn't know if it counted if you watched the movie. <laughs> if you watched the film while watching the film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It freaked me out. No, I dude, I think the movie's terrifying. No judgment All right, so here. let's move on to the second game. So the second game is called The Man in the Fields. Now, this game is said to come from the tradition of burning wicker men for a good harvest. And the Bold Taste of History is a website. And they quote Julius Caesar as stating, Druids used to perform this ritual of human sacrifice by burning wicker men for such a harvest. So this is for um, how how many years Rome was a long, long time ago. Have you seen The Wicker uh, Man with Nicolas Cage? I want to really badly. I haven't seen it. All right. I really want to watch. Do you like it? It's okay. It's it's okay. So this game is said to grant the winner physical and financial protection for a year, and that doesn't sound like amazing when you hear the game. But imagine this: imagine you're like a farmer. And you're scared of financial ruin because your crops won't come. And this could be the answer. Mm. What if you'd like a, just a normal employee and you just slack off and your boss wants to fire you so badly, but for some reason they just can't. They're like, I don't know why, but I like them. <laughs> I like them for this year. We'll see how I feel next October. <laughs> exactly. The minute that that year is over, he's like, or she's like, or they're like, you're done. <laughs> yeah, unless they do it again and again. So the game, it goes like this. First, you need to have a backyard. All right, we just lost everybody in New York and San Francisco, LA, pretty much everybody without a backyard. You're just like, <sighs> well, that's okay, because this game is pretty dangerous, honestly. I, w- I, I wouldn't want anybody to really play it, because it's, it's scary. It's a scary game. Maybe that's just me, who's like an easy imagination. Gullible, you could say. So you need also a lantern to play this game as well. And you start this game sometime after sunset, but before midnight. So that's like 5 o'clock for us right now. Right now, yeah, you could do it like 5.30 and be like, oh, yeah, you could start. So a person will go into their backyard and they will face their house. And this is to start the summon. The player has to say seven times, but who will scare the crows away? And after saying it seven times... The player should hear a response, either behind them or in their own head. And if not, then the summon has failed, and it's recommended that you leave the premises until 6 a.m. the next day. But on a successful summon, the response the player will hear is, that's not your biggest problem. And that's true, because that's when the game starts. You go back into your house and you lock the door. The player will go into a room that has one door. And if anything can be shut in that room, it must be shut. Then the player shuts their eyes. And after a few moments, the player should have a cross and they will leave it in that room. 
And then the player leaves. So you need a land turn a yard and a cross. Yes, that's right. And the player will see that everything in the house that was capable of being opened has opened. So like drawers, bags, shelves, everything. The player must shut everything they see in the house by midnight. Now, as the player is going through and shutting things, they may see a man with quote-unquote ashen skin in the peripheral vision. Now, he's not dangerous. He should not be feared. However, this was <laughs> rule 6, 7, and 8 in the um, guide I was looking at. The player should not look in the yard. If the player does look in the yard, they need to run back to their room within 60 seconds, grab the cross, lock the door, and close their eyes until 6 a.m. They should keep their eyes shut no matter what they hear and until it's okay 6 a.m. And asleep because I'm assuming your eyes are shut? I think you're going to be too scared, Dude, to be honest. Sitting, sitting they, in they, your they, yard, they, let's say it's 7, from 7 p.m. Sorry, not your yard, your room. Sitting in your room from 7 p.m. with your eyes shut until 6 a.m.? That's, that's, that's a challenge. I don't know what... Assuming you, you see the thing at like 7 a.m. you messed up that early, or 7 p.m. you messed up that early. What do you, oh, what do you think it says? you think it says stuff in like your parents' you voices or like mm. people you know? So yeah. r- quick question. So you said if yeah. you don't hear, yeah. if you try to summon this, this thing and you're supposed to, what happens if like you do it wrong, you have to go hide? If you no, see, if like you look in your backyard. Earlier. Like if you don't hear a voice. If you don't hear a voice, you should leave the premises. Why? I don't. It didn't say why. It said to leave the premise. I assume because you messed up and it's able to be in. The, I don't know. They didn't say why. You're you're looking too closely. Okay. Okay. Well, I didn't know if you had a guess on what. You My guess would be it would be able to get to you without like you wouldn't have a safe room. Okay, I got you. Um, and if you have. If you closed everything without looking into the backyard and you get to your safe room and you keep your eyes closed until 6 a.m., you win. And then you are granted a year of financial and physical protection. So so you do this, you say this thing seven mm-hmm. times. What is it? What was um, who will, what? Who will sleep in the woods tonight? Um, <laughs> but who will scare the crows away? But who will scare the crows away? You say yeah. it seven times. You hear a voice that say that says it's not that's not, that's your, not biggest your biggest concern, problem. Your yeah. biggest problem. Then you run inside, choose a room with only one door, shut it, put your cross down, and when you leave, everything's mm-hmm. open. And then you have to shut it and then go back in your room, close the door, and close your eyes until six a.m. And if you do yes, that, you right. win. Yeah. Hmm. It seems like you could prepare for this game. How's that? Like, well, you move into a house and you don't move any of your stuff. Oh yeah, I thought of that too. But yeah, you could you could definitely prepare. That's for a games. that's a cheat code right there. Yeah, but it would still be scary though. Like, I don't know if I could. The the <laughs> risk factor factor seems too high for me. You think it's empty and you you go outside and you do it, and then as you run inside, you see a note from your movers. You're like, hey, you know what? We wanted, we wanted to get this done before the weekend, so here's all your stuff. We even Drop placed it for you. Everything. Yeah. Love, Ashley, home store. Apparently, like, oh the God. man with the Ashens can't... Uh, he just has to witness it every time. You have to witness people either fail or succeed. Well, he's, I guess, like the referee. <laughs> he throws a <the> flag. <laughs> well, I think... He's like, you peaked. If, if you look in the backyard, I think he gives, like, the the man in the field, I think he is him like the go ahead. So what is the enemy here? He is like a scarecrow. If you do look in the yard, you see the scarecrow figure missing a head. Mm. Did you say that? No, I you? didn't I say it. That? I didn't say what he was. Okay. I was going to say this now. And apparently, he crawls off of his uh, holder. I don't know his. Ugh. And he uh and he gets in there pretty quickly. So. And then, so if you do this successfully, then you get financial and health freedom. Yeah, physical protection. Physical protection. Right. You get a bodyguard. <laughs> yeah, it's him. <laughs> okay, boss. Interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. Charlie, we have to get out and do some more ghost hunting. Yeah, we definitely do, but where should we go? Well, there's Bobby Mackey's, the Donovan Mill, or Whispering Estate. 
tons of places. Well, that's true. Or we could just watch the new reality, investigate those places on YouTube, and actually get supernatural evidence. Oh, yeah, the new reality is awesome. They're led by Cody, an empath and claircognizance, and Sean, a medium and psychic. They have a combined 20 plus years in investigating countless paranormal hotspots. They are dedicated to both proving and disproving paranormal phenomenon using their unique gifts and equipment. They're definitely passionate about the paranormal, just like us. Yeah, except they actually experience it in real life, not just sit around and talk about it. Beyond investigations, they also offer cleansing services. So Charlie, maybe you should hit them up about that demon cat you're seeing in your house, or all those knockings and threes. So if you're looking for great paranormal content, which you know you are, because, um, check out the new reality on YouTube. Again, that's the new reality paranormal investigation team on YouTube. Once you discover them, you'll be happy with your new reality. That's lame, bro. Seriously, check them out. This episode is sponsored by Ohio Hauntings and Legends Podcast. Learn more about them at OhioHL.com or give them a follow on their Facebook page, the Ohio Hauntings and Legends Podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Ohio Hauntings and Legends Podcast. We will be taking you to places you have never dreamt of going. Hundreds, if not thousands, of haunted and abandoned locations. We will visit with the paranormal from your nightmares and try to understand the unexplained. Ohio alone has 88 counties within our state, and virtually each one of those counties has a story to tell. Ohio's history is bloodstained throughout its history. We will be covering more than just Ohio. We will cover the state you live in, the country. Trust me. There are thrills, chills, and we are upping the fright factor with each new stop we make. We will be traveling the world, the globe, looking for the strange, the mysterious, and the frightening. Mostly, we will find the unexplainable. Many of these episodes are genuine. Others are legend or hearsay. Believe those that you choose or believe in none. It is your choice. Just get comfortable, sit back, dim the lights, and listen. (laughs) So this last one, this one's called The Midnight Game. Can I ask you one question? For sure. Yeah. Have you, if you go to YouTube and you like search these games, obviously you're going to find YouTubers that talk about these games similar to how we're talking about them. Do you, are there any videos of anybody trying any of these games that we're talking about today? I was too scared to look actually. Okay. The Midnight Man game. Now this one is said to be an ancient pagan tradition. That would be the punishment for those that would insult the pagans gods and i think it can be assumed that this game is also in the same vein of druidic celtic irish cultures because pagan is a very loose term and i'm going to assume that because it seems similar to the last game the man the fields game which i think was druidic in origin as well i mean i'm kind of just guessing because there's no real like this is where this game comes from it's just kind of like rumors about the games so like the first game this is more of a survival not for gain. It's just to prove yourself a, to see if you can outsmart the entity. Now, perhaps people just do this for the thrill. I don't think I could be that kind of person. Um, no. What about I mean, you? No. What are you going to do? Just just brag to your friends? If there's no gain, would you be able to? Yeah. Dude, I... I don't know. I'm not good when it comes to... I, I really outweigh the costs when it comes to physical harm. Yeah, for sure. And these are like the ultimate kind Maybe, of... Maybe like this is what's like... What's the point? I feel like there's a certain age where you become more aware, you know what I mean? Where it's like, like things you do when you're 14 typically aren't things you do when you're 25, which are things you typically won't do when you're like 35. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like the older you are, the the, le- yeah, the, that's the true. more daredevilish aspects leave your life and the more you like think ahead to, oh, this could lead to this consequence. So I feel like maybe if you're a bunch of like 15 year olds, and I don't mean that in a demeaning way, I know there's 15 year olds that listen to us, so. You, you'll you understand in like 10 years. Yeah. When you're older. Well, aren't, isn't there things that like you wouldn't do now that you probably did when you were younger just because when you were younger you didn't think about it? Like it's not like you're – it's not necessarily intelligence. It's just when you're younger, the consequences don't come at you as quickly. Um. Yeah, I probably drive a lot safer than I did. I know I drive a lot safer than I did when I was – so yeah. 17. Well, they say your brain doesn't fully develop until your mid-20s, yeah. so I think that might have something to do with it, but I – 
It's yeah, my true, mom I think. tell me I that a lot. It's just for me personally, <laughs> I've known I've become more of a cautious person over time for sure. I don't think I would have even played these games when I was younger. I mean, I've never even played Bloody Mary. You know what I mean? Yeah. It would have no, to I be don't think I would like, I'd have to be in a really bad um, situation. And to win one of these games would have to be, you know, like really, really. Violent. I mean, I haven't seen it, but obviously this is kind of like the premise of Squid Games, right? Like if you're in that yeah, kind of kinda. situation, maybe. Kind of. If it's like health protection for a year, physical protection, like <laughs> I'm all right. I'm all right. All right. So let's um let's move on to this game. So what you need to play, you need a needle. You need a wooden door, you need matches, a pen or a pencil, paper, and salt. Now, the player must start before midnight. Um, the player must write their full name. <laughs> so I'm just imagining last. you order the game, you know what I mean? Like in a box. It comes with <laughs> salt and a door and paper. And <laughs> like a little mini door. The Midnight Man kit by Hasbro. <laughs> Milton, Milton Bradley's Midnight Man game. <laughs> Um, so the player must write their full name on a piece of paper. <laughs> or the Hasbro got me. Uh, <laughs> um, so full, middle, and last on a piece of paper. And then the player pricks their finger and puts a drop of their own blood on the paper. Then the player turns off all the lights in their house, their space. Then the player puts the paper on a wooden door, lights the candle, and puts that on top of the paper then knocks on the door 22 times. The last knock should be the last stroke of midnight. Whoa. I don't think I don't think I could time that if I wanted to. <laughs> I think I could either. I think that'd be the hardest part. I would it would easily be the hardest part. I would be <laughs> I don't know what happens next in this game, but if nothing happened and something was supposed to happen, I would be so petrified that it's like, wait, did it is it working and it's just going to take some time? Or did I miss it? Did I mess it up? Should I do it again? Is it Eastern time zone that we're playing in here? You know, like, the, I would be thinking of that stuff. I think it's your time zone. I don't know. The player then opens the door, they blow out the candle, and then they shut the door. The player then must immediately relight the candle. And that's when the game starts. So that was all to, like, to like set it up, right? That was your setup. The player should keep the salt, the candle, and the matches in their hand at all times. Uh, you got two two hands, three items, just saying. Well, I mean, you can keep the matches in the and, and you candle have, in You one have hand. to juggle them until 6 a.m., <laughs> and if you drop any of it, <laughs> you have to dunk your head in the toilet and keep your eyes shut. Oh, well, yeah, it's kind of the premise. The player should move around the house slowly, and as the player moves, if their candle goes out, they should light it again within the next 10 seconds and continue moving regardless of it being lit or not. If the candle does not light, the player should shield themselves in a ring of salt until 3.33 a.m. The game is over at 3.33 a.m., and then the player may leave their circle and turn on the lights. The point of the game is to avoid the entity of the Midnight Man. If caught, the Midnight Man may do anything from causing hallucinations of your worst fears or even taking out your actual organs. Now, signs that the Midnight Man is close are that of drops in temperatures, Soft whispers, humanoid shapes, and your candle going out by itself. And the game is over again at 3.33 a.m. But no one should assume that he is left for good. Wow. There could be a sequel. <laughs> well, he could come back. Keep your eyes up for <laughs> I think you open a door <laughs> at that point. Keep your eyes peeled for part two coming at you soon. But until then, we're going to keep this group. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, you open a door at that point. So... If your light doesn't go out, are you automatically safe, or can you still run into him? You can still run into him, but you should just go a different direction. If, like, if you just feel like a drop in temperature, you should just, like, turn around. Or, okay. like, go, in, go another way. So you have to keep moving, and as long as your candle's lit, you're probably good. He'll pr he, If he blows it out, you just have to relight it, and you're probably still good, but you're really in trouble... If it goes out and you don't have the salt or you fail it, the yeah. salt circle. If you yeah. Make a, if you make a, a salt uh, elliptical or whatever it's called. Salt a circle? Long, no, it's not. If it's not a circle, what is that? The, oh. Like, oh, oh, what is that word? Oh, man. Oh. It's, it's I want to say oblique, but I know that's not it. No, that's your sides that I have a really hard time working on. That's your love handles. Planets. 
move in a what shape? I'm going to ask Google because that's what people do. I know we already kind of talked about this. Ellipt- ellipse. Elliptical. It is elliptical. That was Ellip- correct. No, that's not the right word. It's a, it's a much easier Maybe I should word. play the first game and ask questions. <laughs> no, it's it's elliptical. It's if it's like a circle that's just misshapen. Yeah. That was no. my point. If you don't do a perfect circle. Oval. If you, if you don't, oval. Yeah. If you, oval. Don't bring your pro, if you don't bring your protractor, he's like, yeah. too bad. So those are the three games I discussed today. Hmm. Wow. So... So if it, is the the game's over at three thirty three, even if you don't, your candle doesn't go out. Yeah, and mm-hmm. that's when you win. And, and all lose. you win is bragging rights, even though he might not actually be gone. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. What if, what if the leaderboard is just like? So if someone's like, I won with a bath and body work candle and a full carton of salt, and then the person above them is like, I won. With a mini candle and, you know, like a a salt shaker from a dinner table amount of salt. And then somebody's like, I won with a lit match and just a handful of salt. You know, that's like the top oh, person. I don't know. That's like bragging rights or whatever. Or like a, like a, like a scoreboard. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm thinking of like a, a leaderboard. Like I beat default. You know, default is whatever. But you like that's the only way you like how could you be better at it than somebody else? That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking like arcade game. Yeah, like that kind of leaderboard, arcade, I guess. So, like, you know, put put your three initials in. Yeah. You know. uh, let's uh, let's move on to the discussion. Now it's the time of the episode. We'd like to thank the people who are on our Patreon and supporting the show. Um, and at the time of the recording, the people we want to thank are Avery, Jocelyn, Jody, and invoking the tempest yeah it's uh, unique i like that one we're keeping your own in private invoking because you gave us that so that's what we're doing figure that's what you wanted but anyway those people are, are on our patreon and they get to listen actually no no they don't get to listen they do but that's what i mean and because i lost the last quiz spoilers they got to vote on the episode that i would do for this month or one of the episodes that we do for this month. And because of that, we all, all got to interact and pick from a couple topics that I still might do sometime. But also, if you join in January at the dedicated tier or before, you can get this new item. It's only available to those that are on our Patreon. And it's 100% free. It's You don't have to buy it. You don't have to do anything. You just automatically get it by being in our dedicated tier. And it is only available to you in our dedicated tier no one else can get it or buy it completely exclusive to our patreon it's an item that is designed by our good friend eddie and i'm really excited to put it out but you're all gonna see it's pretty cool and in addition you like charlie said you get to vote we have quizzes you guys heard our bonus little patreon sampling so it's all that good stuff director's cuts listener submission interviews tons of extra content if you're interested patreon slash believing the bizarre and from there, let's get back to our episode. That was us uh, talking about cursed games. Man, uh, would you play any of those? No. No. <laughs> no, up. I would I would want to watch. I don't even want to watch somebody play. Like, for entertainment value, yes. But at the same time, you know somebody could get hurt or killed or have their organs ripped out. I have a scenario. The bathtub one, no way. Like that one, it's way too arbitrary. It's like you never actually know when to karate chop. And I get the feeling that maybe you get the relief that nobody's watching you or following you. But I second guess myself way too much. So I, even if I won, I would still feel like I lost. And you don't win anything. So from that from that logic, you can't say that this is unbelievable. Yeah, I, well, I, I never have logic for anything that is unbelievable. It's just a feeling. <laughs> I, I, okay, the, this is, I don't know where you pictured this happening. This is where I pictured it happening. You're walking a street. It's busy. It's New York City. There's taxi cabs. And you're doing a crosswalk. You're going across the crosswalk with 80 other people. And you know that she's nearby. And then you karate chop. And you yell whatever you're supposed to yell. And all these people around you are like, crazy. <laughs> And then somebody's recording you, mm-hmm. and then you're on YouTube, and not for the reasons you want to be on yeah. YouTube. So the first one, no way. Last one, 
I, I like the rules of the last one. It's kind of fun because you have like, you know, you're kind of armed. Like you actually feel armed a little bit. You have your candle, you have your salt. Like I feel like in terms of traditional, not maybe not traditional, but in more, I guess, video game gameplay where you have a weapon or something. Like I like that you have a candle, you got your salt so you can, you have some control over what's happening, I guess, so to speak. And you're wandering around. I like that you're not just sitting with your eyes closed because that's stressful. I mean, it'd be stressful regardless, but I wouldn't do it. But here's my here's my scenario for, for the second one. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. So you you rob someone, right? You, and so it just it's understood you're not a good person. All right. Are you okay. cool with that? Yeah, sure. So you, you rob someone's house and – or maybe maybe you're house-sitting someone, but you want to steal from them. And they have a safe. Right? Mm Mm-hmm. And you know that there's a lot of very valuable things in the safe, right? Yeah. But you don't have the code or the key. Do you see where I'm going with this? Yeah, I see where you're going with it. Yeah. So you go outside, you play the game. Obviously, the the reward isn't the the year of of prosperity and and physical protection. The reward is that everything in the house has to open including that safe i see i see maybe i'm a terrible person for thinking of that i literally thought of that almost instantaneously but i'm like no i'm gonna clever. let this play out before i i don't want to ruin it there that'd be a cool horror movie i think yeah it's a robber so it's it's one of those inverse ones where like the bad guys the protagonist so you don't actually like them but maybe they have a soft heart it's like joe from you yeah or something like that I can't think, or maybe you have a, a you know, a goddamn oh, wow. pickle jar you can't open up. The, 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 the old guy who's blind. Oh, Hush? Is that what's newer? Called? No, not yeah. Hush. That's on Netflix. I, that's I know it. what you're talking about. The sequel just came out. Yeah. What about it? It's like, that, that's, that's an inverse. Isn't oh, it? I don't know who it follows. Does it follow him or does it follow the kids? I thought I it was the kids. I don't know. I haven't seen it. The new one's about him, though, I think. No idea. <laughs> kind of like the okay. movie we just watched on Patreon, though. Yes. Nobody Sleeps yeah. in the Woods 2 tonight. No, two. no one's... No. I Nobody. didn't... I, I'm still upset at you about that movie. Not good. But that's my only situation where I could see it being valuable. Would you, Charlie, play any of these games? See, the, I was, I was going to use what I said to you. That logically, if I say... Yeah, I or no, I wouldn't play them because I'm too scared. I can't say they're unbelievable. And I don't think I could play these because I'd be too scared to play them. So I think because of that, I have to get at least give them a skeptical. Just because I know we both believe in ghosts, we both believe in spirits. I think putting that out there is asking for something. That's a good point. That's a good point because naturally I do kind of want to go unbelievable because I don't because I don't, yeah, I feel like. Oh, yeah, no, there's silly, silly things, and I understand why. It's but. just too rigid and, like, initiating. Like, obviously, there's seance, there's seances, and there's, yeah, there's rituals and seances where people initiate. But that's things. what a ritual is, though, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It reminds me of, like, ritual magic. Like, yeah. So I think in some way you're doing some kind of ritual magic. That's a good point. That's a good point, because, my yeah, my inclination was to go unbelievable Mm -hmm. and even if like i feel like you could still somebody out there could still have an argument that i don't believe them to be real but there's literally no reward so why even bother like even if it's a point zero one percent chance it's real why even do it but if you're even doing that you know i guess that's kind of like then you have to take a deeper look at what our spectrum between unbelievable and skeptical is but i i agree because if I went unbelievable, I feel like I'd have to put my money where my mouth is. I would, yeah, I wouldn't want to do that. I, I'd have to buy, God, I'd have to buy a lantern. I'd have to buy, <laughs> do I have salt? I probably you have salt it. somewhere. Yeah. What was your, I, I have a lot of candles. <laughs> <laughs> candles? I don't bring up Bath and Body Works every week just for fun. A lighter? I have a lot of, I, I don't, oh, I have the one of those long lighters. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I guess I would just need a lantern. I got a backyard. <laughs> The the real game is dodge the exactly. dog poop in the backyard. That's why you have the lantern. The man in the fields would be like, oh, come on. 
<laughs> the action guys. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, dude. Okay, listen. If it was, you have to go. I don't have a cross, actually. Yeah, I go to buy a cross. They go, oh, why? I don't think they ask you why you're buying a cross. But if they did, it'd be a very awkward situation. <laughs> no, they <laughs> don't. Awkward, it's not a gun. Situation <laughs> explained. Like, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm just trying to play this game. <laughs> but, dude, if the if the game wasn't to close everything before six, it was to clean up all the dog poop in your yard before six, I would probably just kill myself because there's no way I'm winning that. And if that makes me a bad dog owner, then <laughs> Okay. So I kind of gave you what I'm at with this. Uh, what I, do you think I you're at? I too. I agree. I can't. I'm skeptical. Because do you say I, skeptical? I think yeah. it's unbelievable, but you're right because I'm not willing to do it somewhere deep in the back of my mind it's because that what if it is real so yeah i i feel unbelievable but i'll go skeptical just because i'm not it's an easy discussion but it's also not it's just like there's like my imagination is large enough to imagine the what if and it's like yeah like what is it? Who's who's gonna scare the crows or something like that? I'll never know. Uh, that, who will scare the crows away? That'll that's the issue. I would say it wrong. I'm like, oh, this is fake. <laughs> but it, seriously, it's like you say it six times, and right before you say it the seventh time, there's, it just crosses your mind. Like, are you mentally and physically prepared to hear? Am I ready for this? Someone to whisper in your ear. Do yeah. you need a scarecrow, or does that come equipped with the game? No, no. He just he's just there. He's just there. Okay. So that is our episode on cursed games. So thank you for listening to this uh, listener voted in topic. What a fun one. It was so much fun to research. I liked this one a lot because it's very different from what we've done before. It's very thought exercise And it's fun because it's it's you have to imagine doing – everybody loves games. I mean, yeah, human beings mm-hmm. like games. It's just how it is. So it's fun to imagine playing it and then putting yourself in this situation where you're like, would you do it or no? None of these games have a risk reward big enough for I think. Yeah. There's uh, there's going to be listeners out there that are like I would totally do it and and more power for to sure. You. But if if you do it record it, let me watch. <laughs> yeah. Put it post it on t- uh, our Instagram. That's not how it works, but <laughs> if it was like eternal life or you win a million dollars, you know what I mean? Like you're still risking your life, but at least it seems more valuable than bragging rights i mean there are some games that have bigger risks maybe that'll be a part two of the big risk games the big risk once again i hope everybody had a happy holidays merry christmas i hope that time was fun you got some time away with family also for everybody who checked out the patreon sampling i hope you liked that we don't have to go too deep into that again but remember if you do want extra content our patreon is out there and everybody who is a dedicated tier member or joins our dedicated tier any time in January gets the unique item that you can only get by being in the tier. We'll be posting about it all during January. We're just kind of saving it until then. So if you want to find out what it is that you could get, just wait until the beginning of January and you'll see it all over social media. Yeah. And if you like the show so far, just if you're like, if you're like just finding the show or something and you like it and you want to get, leave us a review on Apple or even now on Spotify, that would be very helpful. Yeah. You know what? Screw Apple right now. Because I know there's only like eight percent of you that listen on Apple. I'm talking to the other like eighty percent, and I, and my math is fine. Okay, there's other. It's not just Apple and Spotify. I know it's eighty twenty. Okay, there's some people out there on Castbox and Google. But anyway, for those of you on Spotify, if you noticed, there is now a rating on Spotify. I don't think you can leave a review. I think it's just one through five stars. So if you're enjoying it on Spotify, please leave us the five star. I don't know how much it helps yet. I haven't looked into that algorithm, but it still looks good. It's a vanity metric and we have vanity. So <laughs> Absolutely. it would go a long way and we appreciate it. I think we're already at like 45 or so. So seriously, thank you everybody who's already done that. So anyway, thank you everybody so much for listening. As always, I'm Tyler. And I'm Charlie. And catch us next week on Believing the Bizarre. The podcast as bizarre as you are. <laughs>